Hi, this is Tim Von Rieden with CGCookie.com, and in this video tutorial series, I'm going to take an in-depth look at how I go about drawing a creature. This will cover the process from an initial silhouette to a final render, and in this part, I will go through the very first process of conception, creating the silhouettes. Okay, let's get started. So for this tutorial, um, instead of going just straight into Photoshop and laying down some shapes and try to create a silhouette out of it, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a generator that will generate ideas for you to base your conceptions off of. So if I go to my web browser, and I believe it's saved, yep, there it is. So Seventh Sanctum is a really good site if you want to just, you're out of ideas, your creativity is kind of down. Um, you can pretty much come here, and if you look on the left hand side where it says generators, all these different categories have um, a generator that will pump out just different ideas for you to use. So if I want to do creatures, I go to beings, and under monsters, I think I'm going to go with the legendary creature generator. So then from here, you just tell it how many you want to pump out and click generate. And there we go. So it pumped out 10 different creature ideas for me to use. And I'm going to use these as the basis for my concepts. And if you actually look through some of them, I mean, they're kind of strange, but that's good because it's something that I wouldn't have thought of probably by my own. So I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side and reference it whenever I go on to the next concept. So in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. Name it Creatures. And I want it to be a much wider base than um, its height. So maybe a 17 by 11. Okay. So now that I have my base all set up, I'm going to go ahead and just start doing my creatures. Make sure I have this all set up. So now for this, I'm going to be using a standard circle brush. So it's the hard edge brush that they give you. And I'm going to have only my shape dynamics turned on, not my other, because I don't want any um, transition from a uh, grayscale. I just want a solid black stroke throughout. And I'm going to do this all in a new layer so that I'm not drawing directly on the background layer because then if I want to do erase or pull different parts of the shaped out it's easier to have it on another layer to do so. Now I'm going to pull out that generator. I'm just going to screenshot it with on a Mac it's Command Shift 3. Minimize it. Now I'm going to open this with Photoshop, just so I can have a good reference of it right beside. And there we go. So I'm just going to crop it. Okay. So now, with those in the background, as a quick reference that I can jump in and out of when I'm doing my creatures, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to make sure I have my hard brush selected. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my brush tip shape so it has more of a flat feel. So now when I draw in, you can kind of see what that does. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to time lapse it just a little bit because I'm going to be doing pretty much the same process for 10 different creatures and I don't want to bore you guys so I'm just going to make this a little faster. So here we go and I'm just using that brush and what I'm doing is trying to capture the shapes of the anatomy of the creature and I'm just blacking in with that black and then I'm using white where I'm erasing to create more of a basic light to give it somewhat of a value, more of a shape. So for this first creature it was a magic deer with no tail pretty much. So I'm adding little trinkets like on the horns and around the ankles and I'm making sure there's no tail and then I'm grounding it off by adding a little dirt on the bottom so it's just not just floating in space. So for things like that it's good to have kind of a basic understanding of animal anatomy especially of a deer so it's pretty basic but uh so like for this one which is the bobcat which is hairless I believe yes and um, for this one, I had it kind of running and in motion. So I have just basic forms bending and 
trying to create a feel of it's moving. It's not just standing still like the first one. So now for this, something that isn't as interesting. So I took a pose that was a little bit more interesting, and I add, I'm adding stripes and making a kind of a bigger tail because that creature was, didn't really stand out on its own. So just little things like that can make it stand out a little bit. So now the next one, which was an eight-legged cuttlefish with cockroach legs. Um, I definitely had to try something a little different because this is definitely not what I'm used to. So I'm just doing basic insect legs and very little highlighting to kind of show that this is a darker creature and the specular is really shining on this one. So the next one was a squirrel that was built out of blocks. So this one's very odd, very strange. Um, and for things like this, if it's really outside of your comfort zone, it's kind of a good practice because I know for me this is definitely not something I'm used to. So that's why um, this was definitely a challenge. And I'm just remembering to work really fast. Um, the whole point of a silhouette is you see it for, if you could see it for a fraction of a second and pretty much recognize what it is and the shape and pretty much your mind creates its own little story of what this is. So for each of these, you want to make sure you have a very strong silhouette that really puts out the story, and it's easy to read, pretty much. And the best part about doing silhouettes is you can pretty much make happy accidents. So I believe it's like 50-50 where you kind of know what's going to go on, and then the other 50 is you have, it's all based on what your eye sees, and you let your mind kind of take over and create shapes. So that's why I love making silhouettes, because it's kind of unprepared and you that's when I believe you can create the greatest art is when you don't plan for it. So now for this one, this one was a little bit more um, exciting because it was a python jackal with a long tail. So this one I, I kind of had fun with and I could kind of play around with those different shapes and how they merge together, the hybrid between a jackal and a snake. And I gave him a weapon, just something simple, just to give it more of a character, like this is a very strong um, creature, and it's almost built for war. And I definitely took um, a Medusa kind of a sense of how it would move and how the upper body kind of stays upright. So it's things like that, just kind of keep in the back of your mind when you're creating um, a creature, is how they stand and how they would function. Because if they don't have a believable... Um, sense of structure and form, then it will come across as a very poor creature design. Now for this one, this one was pretty much a monkey with uh, small human arms. So not the most interesting, but um, I'm going to do it anyways, and I'm just going to kind of do a basic gorilla pose with it. So now this one was a, kind of a hybrid between a shrew and a bobcat with uh, tiny limbs. So for something like this, I'm using um, more whites than blacks. Blacks are almost just to uh, give it more of a shadow. Because I, I, I kind of see it in my mind as it being a lighter tone creature, so it's easier to um, put that across if you have less black and more of a white. Just like before, ground it off with some dirt underneath. Now this one was an octopus spider hybrid that has no legs, so instead I gave it tentacles, and there has to be some form of change on, chains on it. So this is definitely very strange for me, so I um, gave it a really big, robust um, body and I I didn't really know where to go from there so I'm just building up the whites and kind of playing with different shapes and that's where I kind of created the idea well that maybe this is like the eye of the body and I just kind of went for it so obviously this was not something that was planned something that just kind of happened and that's why silhouetting um, first in the conception process is really fun because you never know what you're going to come up with Now for this one, this was a, a water, or an owl, and an eel hybrid that was made out of liquid. So this one is like very, very strange creature design, and um, 
that's one of the, the upsides about doing a generator is because I would never think of doing something like this before. So it's like a quick little mental challenge of, well, how, how would it work and how would I, how do I see it? So I definitely recommend using the generator, especially when your creativity is kind of running low. And for this one, I put it on a branch just to kind of show that it has like a long tail like or an eel like tail. And then for the last one, it was pretty much like a hybrid between a mosquito and a ferret. So I gave it kind of an upper body of a mosquito and a lower body of a ferret. And I just kind of played with that in my mind. I just kind of laid it out. And now while you're doing this, it's also kind of good to have a little story kind of in the back of your mind. Not a very detailed or complex one by any means, but just something that gives this character something more to it. It's like while I'm drawing it, I'm saying, I'm thinking like what does this character or what does this creature live off of? Where does he live? So then I decided like things like adding extra arms because he has such a long body. And maybe he's grabbing things while he's flying, things like that. So now when I'm all done, I like to resize them to kind of bring the composition together as a whole. And then I'll merge them all together on one layer and just throw a quick gradient or something on it, just like that. And then um, something a little extra is you can put a little um, background, just something to break it away from the white just a little bit, and then a shadow just to kind of ground it a little bit more. This will just help kind of give it more of a value. And there we go. So this is just one way of creating silhouettes. Um, there's plenty of other ways. You can go grayscale or just building it with color. So I'm just demonstrating one way that I like to do it. So I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.